Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Stanley with Stanley Handcraft and today I'm going to talk about getting a better or stronger hot throw from your candles and the best tips and the things to look out for to get a potential better hot throw. And of course before we get going, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button as well because it helps with the YouTube algorithm. And of course you'll get notified when I release new videos. Now of course jumping right into this one, getting a stronger hot throw is of course something that every single candle maker wants and looks for. It's the most important part of making the candle. You want it to be nice and strong and throw a scent throughout the entire house. And of course, when you first get into candle making, you don't realize kind of how difficult that can be sometimes, especially when working with different waxes, oils, wicks, or anything like that. Sometimes getting a strong hot throw is not as easy as just melting wax and adding oil. So I put together a quick list, uh, basically some of the top tips to look out for and things that you can do to correct your candle or to look out for in your candle so that you get a real nice strong candle. And the first one on the list, of course, is gonna be wax. Choosing the right wax and which wax you want to work with is going to play a huge role in how much of a hot throw that your candle is going to have. Certain waxes just don't throw as strong as other waxes. So making sure that you go through and you choose a wax that's going to give you the hot throw that you really want and desire. And what I mean by that is certain waxes like soy as opposed to paraffin can throw a lot more subtle or a lot more weak than a paraffin wax. And that's just getting started. So if you want a candle line that's going to be like eco-friendly or anything like that, a lot of people tend to go towards soy. But one thing that you do need to be aware of is soy is going to throw a lot weaker or a lot more subtle than something like a paraffin wax. Paraffin wax and the makeup around it is it just makes itself for a stronger scent throw. It makes itself for a more powerful smell kind of overall. But that doesn't mean that you can't get a nice strong scent throw from soy. But it is something to look out for. So if you do choose soy, know that you're probably going to get just a little bit weaker hot throw than say a paraffin candle or something like a Yankee candle, which is 100% paraffin. And then of course I will talk about the ways to get a nice strong or a stronger scent throw from waxes like soy. Now of course, once you've chosen your wax, the next step that's going to come to is what oils you use. And believe it or not, certain oils just don't work well with certain waxes. So if you do use an oil that's just not getting a strong scent throw and you've gone through and you've fixed every other tip that I'm going to give in this video, like wicks or anything like that, the next thing you want to do is make sure that that oil is actually recommended or even formulated for the particular wax that you're using. Soy, again, being a number one factor in this one. If you get soy wax, and most popular is 464, you get that from any of the popular websites sites, they usually have a rating system and Candle Science is great for this one. You go to Candle Science's website and it will give you a rating system on the oil on how well it works with soy. So once you find the wax that you're going to be using, you definitely want to take a look at the oil and make sure that it's going to work well with a wax like soy or even paraffin. And of course, any of the other waxes that are out there, beeswax, coconut soy, coconut apricot, anything like that. You wanna make sure that you get the oils that are gonna work best within that wax. Another thing to look out for when you do choose an oil is certain oils are meant to give off a real subtle fragrance, something that's not gonna be overpowering even if you do make a 100% proper candle. So something like a cinnamon, which is an oil that I use a lot in all my candles, is a really strong scent. No matter what wax you use with that one, you're typically gonna get a really strong smell from the candle. Again, whether it's soy wax, coconut soy, coconut apricot, or paraffin, or beeswax, or anything like that, Cinnamon usually throws off a really strong scent. And strong enough, of course, that it's gonna fill an entire room or an entire house. And then, of course, jumping to some other oils, there are certain oils, uh, I've seen this a lot in florals, and even some citrus or lemon type scents where they're meant to have a real subtle throw. So even if, like I said, even if you do make a candle that is really strong, you got the wax, you've chosen the right wick, you've done everything you can to make a strong candle, it's still gonna throw a relatively subtle scent throughout the entire house. So that's definitely one thing you wanna pay attention to, especially if you're going for a candle line that's known for having real strong, powerful scents. If you're going for a candle line that has a little bit more subtle scents, they work perfect for that. And then of course, moving into the next tip, since we're on oils, I will talk about oils again, and that is using too little of a fragrance oil or actually too much of a fragrance oil. Now, anybody jumping into candles for the first time, uh, and I did the exact same thing when I was first starting out, I just initially thought that the more oil that you add to your wax, the stronger the scent is gonna be, and that's just not the case. Sometimes adding too much fragrance fragrance oil in a candle can it kind of drown out the wick to where it doesn't burn well enough to get a good mix of the wax, the oil, and the flame so that it creates a perfect blend and throws that scent. So one thing that you can do if you're getting a candle that just isn't throwing and you're adding a lot of oil, you're up around the 10, 11, 12% range, which means you're adding about 1.6 ounces to two ounces per pound of wax. If you're not getting a good scent throw from that one, definitely dial it back and go from 
like a 12 to a 10 or a 10 to an eight. Me personally, I use right around like seven to eight, sometimes 9% in just about all the waxes that I use. And I do get a really nice strong scent throw from 8%. And of course, on the other side of that one, sometimes adding too little of a fragrance oil can also lead to a candle that just doesn't throw very well. So if you're adding something like 6%, 5%, sometimes it may not be enough oil to get picked up in that wick when it's burning and again, throw the scent. So quite honestly, for me, the sweet spot is right around like eight or 9%. And that's not gonna be the same for all waxes and all oils, but you usually get a pretty nice even scent throw with right around like 8%. And to add on to choosing the right fragrance oils, making sure that you're actually using fragrance oils as opposed to essential oils can make a huge difference. Now, a lot of people want to use essential oils in their candles because they want to have that real clean, kind of eco-friendly tagline. So a lot of people will go towards essential oils not realizing that essential oils just don't burn the same way that fragrance oils do. Now, that's not to say that you can't use essential oils in candles almost every fragrance oil that's out there has a little bit of essential oils in them, but it's usually meant to help with the cold throw, the overall scent of the candle oil itself. So you can use essential oils in a lot of candles, not all essential oils. There are some that you definitely don't wanna burn because they can be harmful. But if you do use essential oils in candles, you should know that you're going to get a very weak or a very subtle scent throw from those candles. Now the next one is also just as important as picking your wax, and that is choosing the right candle wick. Now there are a bunch of different wicks to choose from, from wooden wicks to cotton wicks and when you get to cotton wicks there are a dozen or more wicks to choose from from HTP to CD to LX to Ecos and when you're just starting out choosing the right wick can definitely be overwhelming. If you go to any of the candle guys that are out there again Lone Star, Nature's Garden, Candle Science they all have some really good wick guides and they'll tell you exactly what wick they sell fits or burns best in the wax that they sell and that's definitely one thing that you want to pay attention to because certain wicks just don't burn very well in certain waxes. So if you do end up getting a particular wax like a soy and and you choose something like a hemp wick, which burns really hot, it might be burning way too hot for that wax and just going through the candle extremely fast and not having enough time to really pick up and burn the wax and the oil together and create that nice scent throw. It could be burning so hot and so fast that it just goes right through it and you really don't get a scent throw from it. And of course that can go the opposite way as well. So if you get something like a really hard paraffin wax and you get a wick like an eco, which has a little bit lower of a melt point, it could be burning too soft or too light for that wax. So definitely pay attention to that and if you've checked your oil you've checked your wax and those two are definitely compatible the next thing you want to do is check your wick make sure that you've got the right wick and test a couple different wicks so pick up like an eco or a cd or an lx or an htp and try all four of those with that same wax and oil combination. And one other thing that can help a candle that doesn't have a really good scent throw are additives like Vibar. Now these can definitely play a huge factor when you're using a wax that has, like I said, a little bit more of a subtle scent throw like soy. You can add in things like Vibar to help bring out that scent throw. Vibar will actually help hold the oil just a little bit better and it burns a little bit stronger than something like the soy does, almost like a paraffin. So if you do end up using a wax like that, a coconut soy or a soy coconut apricot, anything like that, and you wanna stick with more of the eco-friendly line, but it normally has a subtle scent throw, definitely pick up some Vibar and try that out. And of course, last but not least, one thing that you wanna do is make sure that you're curing your candles. Now that doesn't mean you have to cure them for five to six to eight weeks, but definitely making sure that you're curing them for longer than a couple days. Typically with paraffin waxes, you don't have to let them sit near as long before you burn them for the first time. It's right around 48 to maybe 36 hours, and you should be able to gauge whether or not the hot throw is gonna be good enough in that candle right after that. For some of the softer waxes that take a little bit longer to kind of harden and cure something like, again, a soy coconut wax or anything like that, you definitely want to let those sit for probably more like four to five days, if not up to two weeks, depending on the testing that you're doing. Now, me personally with soy or anything like that, I let mine sit for about four or five days before I put them on the website, sell them, and do my actual first burn testing to see how good the scent throw is. And that's only because soy is a little bit softer and it takes a little bit longer to really harden up as opposed to the paraffin blends or the paraffin waxes. All right, so that's pretty much it with this one. Just a few quick tips on getting a stronger candle scent throw from your candles. I hope that was helpful. If I missed anything or if you'd like more clarification on, on any of the tips that I mentioned, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to go through, update those in the comments and then make a part two of this video if I need to, going into kind of further explanation on some of those. And of course, if you like the video, hit subscribe, hit the like button and definitely jump over and follow me on any of the social media platforms that I've listed in the video description down below as well. My website, the email address, and of course the phone number if you wanna sign up for any of the text alerts that I send out, that number is 25 Five three three zero three seven nine six eight. And again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Don't leave